whoa, 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 whoa. Was he putting his own verbal percussion in there whilst playing the flute? Hey guys, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whichever applies to you. Welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Julia. I'm a contemporary singing specialist based in Australia. And today I am returning to the wonderful musical world of Jethro Tull. My first time reaction to Aqualung was only recently, but Ian was such an incredible vocalist and performer. And the concept of that music and the way that they executed it live was just incredible. So I cannot wait to dive on into one of the suggestions that was in the comments section underneath that video locomotive breath. So without further ado, let's get into it. I was just about to say that is an amazing groove to start with. I'm really feeling that blues vibe they had going through there. That was awesome. Like funk blues. I don't know. There's so many different influences in Aqualung that I was listening to. I'm like, are these guys a blues group? Are they blues rock? I don't know. We're going to keep going. Let's keep going. The singing hasn't started. Amazing speech quality is really leaning into that twangy nasalized setup that I heard in Aqualung. I feel like I'm not hearing the like levels as clearly in this particular version, if that makes sense. Like I'm, I'm trying to gauge as much as I can, as far as timbre and execution as possible from Ian's vocals. But I think the mix feels a little bit unbalanced or like a little bit muddy in this recording only just because I feel I feel like I heard it much clearer listening to Aqualung, like the vocal line itself cut through the mix really clearly. Uh, in this one, I'm having to concentrate a little bit to try and hear what's happening timbre wise. But yeah, that twang and nasalized approach I can hear cutting through this mix pretty clearly. I am losing some of the words. And I think that that's to do with a little bit of the muddiness because his articulation in Aqualung was incredible. Like he was so, so, so on it. Every consonant and word was clear and sharp. So I feel like maybe I'm just missing some of the words in the mix here. But anyway, there's this sense of motion in the music, which is really cool because obviously a locomotive, you know, the the one at the front that pulls the train along. Yeah, we have this, I feel like we're moving. I feel like there's this motion through the music, which is really cool because of what the title is. But yeah, 
vocally we're staying in first register we have a little bit of that bluesy distortion that's coming in as well as like a hint of maybe a similar blues run to what I heard in Aqualung but anyway we're gonna keep listening I am sure this is gonna be great I'm loving the tension they're building musically melody not sure but that was amazing i know nothing about what it takes to be a flautist but to go from a breath-based instrument back into singing the dude's got stamina damn which i feel like is a very general way of saying his breathing muscles for inhalation and exhalation just don't quit <laughs> they just keep going that's amazing god the syncopation in that solo that was a that was very enjoyable i'm having so much fun if there's a silent howling When he catches angels as they fall And the all-time winner Has got him by the balls When he picks up his Bible Yes, it's over that page one A finger God, he stole the handle And the pain who was stop going Only to slow down back with a leg comes up. <laughs> Whoa, 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 was he putting his own verbal percussion in there? Whilst playing the flute? Ian! <laughs> it almost sounds like the breath that he is using to play this flute is pitched. Am I, am I crazy? I feel like I'm hearing that. Also, this switch up in the music. Where was it? I wanted to stop it there, but I was like, I cannot. I must keep listening. <laughs> D 
da 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 uh, <laughs> That was fun. I can't explain why it's fun because I don't play any of the instruments that executed that, but that was very amusing musically to have that be the tension point. Because up until there, we've had this feeling of momentum in the music. Yes, it sounds like it's going into obviously a musical transition, but I was definitely not anticipating that kind of musical transition. So it takes me by surprise orally and not just pitch, but also rhythmically. That was, that was really, really fun. And I love how don't let the balloon touch the floor just never, never dies, no matter how old you get. That's such a fun thing to have going out to the audience. Is it water or powder that's in it? Cause I feel like I'm seeing something just go when it, when it bursts, not to do with vocals at all. This was so musically fun. And yeah, at the end, that really did sound like the breath that he was using <laughs> had pitch in it. And at the same time, he's playing the flute, like talk about multitasking. That's amazing. I feel like in this particular piece, and I know that I'm a vocal coach, so I meant to mostly focus on the vocals, but I feel like for this song, for me, the music is what shone the, the strongest, like the musicianship. There's little hints of blues in the beginning. The crazy, amazing groove actually from start to finish, how they were able to build tension, release tension. This music to me was highly enjoyable, super duper fun. And it was almost like the vocals were one of the layers within the musical texture as opposed to the dominant soloist line, if that makes sense. So this was really, really fun. I got to hear things vocally, yes, that I heard last time. I don't think he did as much vocally in this song just because he wasn't singing as much as compared to Aqualung, but he was able to demonstrate some seriously insane like skills playing the flute. I was not expecting that. Like it's incredible bard, like performer, great physical stamina, also flautist. Like that's, <laughs> that's kind of amazing. I know that a lot of instrumentalists can sing, but I'm wondering which came first for him. Was he a singer first and then also played the flute or did he start playing the flute and then just added vocals in? And that's, that's how this became part of what they do as a band. This was so much fun. Anyways, it's absolutely incredible to be able to see the instrumentation, I guess, really shine within this song. But what I want to do, because I didn't know how much vocals to anticipate. I'm going to go back. I'm going to go to one of the longer stretches of singing that he did and maybe break down in a little more detail what it was that he was doing there. Because when you listen to something for the first time, it's hard to gauge exactly how much of a particular vocal approach is actually going to exist within the song. And in this case, we had so much more instrumental and then it felt like the vocals kind of bookended <laughs> either side of the song. So I'm going to go back. I think I'll go to this first section and we'll just break down in a little more detail what it is that he is doing vocally because I, I feel like his voice is unique, but there are a lot of stylings that to me lean more towards what a blues vocalist or a soul vocalist might start to use. So vocal choices that on their own are not necessarily the most beautiful sound. Like it's not a pure tone that we're getting from him. Is there some cleanliness to his singing? Yes. Is there a distortion that feeds into his sound? Yes, absolutely. And that nasality that I mentioned earlier is pretty consistent throughout this performance, but I feel like these choices are really indicative of some of the style choices that you hear in your blues and your soul singers. Like there are qualities in this sound that are so key for emotive storytelling that perhaps in other styles you might not hear as much of, but that's what I mean when I say I like these tones because they remind me of a lot of really powerful blues singers who get some distortion in their sound, which on its own sounds like what, what purpose would this sound possibly have in singing, but they're all just means of expressing a different kind of message. And in contemporary singing, you're not locked into any singular tone, if that makes sense. So let's go back and we'll just have a little listen to Ian's vocals through here and I'll break it down in a little more detail. So for example, there we had that little blues-esque run that came out of Loser and he is sitting quite forward. So that nasality that I mentioned earlier 
It's where the sound is propagating through the nose. Nasality on its own can sound quite dull. So this nasalized sound, actually, as an Australian, I'm <laughs> perhaps utilize nasality in my accent a little bit more than other accents. But if we start to go further up north and we get a real, a real solid Australian accent and it starts to sit a little bit more forward because we've got this gang kind of happening as it sits a little bit more up here, that's where you can start to imagine that sound sitting when he is singing. Obviously, he's not singing with an Australian accent. I'm just giving you an example of where it can exist and why I'm perhaps not as confronted when I hear nasality in singers. Like, is it a tone that we want in there all the time? Probably not. And in fact, you can often work really hard to kind of remove that tone. But in certain styles, it becomes a little bit more stylistically applicable, if that makes sense. But anyway, the sound is traveling up through the nose. So it means the soft palate is slightly down. The velum, if you ever are curious about seeing what it's like, if it's in a lifted position as you just open your mouth in front of a mirror and you make a sound like, and you'll see like everything is like covered at the back of your mouth with this quality. Hear how dull that sound is? That dullness is why we know that he's not only using nasality because his singing doesn't sound purely like that. So he's not just using a nasalized tone, but we definitely get some of that uh, happening in in the sound quality. It's hard for me to uh, (laughs) give a perfect imitation because I'm not a male vocalist, but we have this twanginess in his sound. And all you need to know if we're breaking down his vocals is that some of it's propagating through the mouth and some of it is propagating up through the nose. So An example was on that loser, this but this whiny nasalized sound crops up a lot in your blues and soul singing. Like even if we just rested on that, like that's really sitting there. But if I open my mouth a little more, like you get a little bit of that nasalized sound in there, a little bit of uh, crunch to the quality as well. It's not meant to be a pleasant sound, basically. It's not meant to be perfect and pure and sweet, but we do know that he has the potential for that kind of thing in his sound, as we heard in Aqualung, where he wasn't nasalized all the time, but it does trend towards this forward placement. So let's have a little listen to Loser and that'll where we where we can hear that dominant. <laughs> This loser, we have this nasalized sound going through there. <laughs> the all-time loser, and come tell his death, when it feels a business craving, steam breaking on his brow. So we have this hint of dullness to the quality, but we also still have a little bit of twang because it can be bright. You can have a twangy sound that can wind up going through the nose. So long as it's coming through the mouth a little bit, you will start to get a sound that is similar to what Ian is using here. Yeah, God, that sounds so, uh, that sounds so blues soul this kind of whining quality, closed off whining, drawling sound sometimes. In the singing there. That's really cool. I was almost expecting something that wasn't as heavy on these more closed off vocal sounds when I first listened to Jethro Tull. And then now in this one, of course, Ian is leaning much more fully into that nasal setup that he used in Aqualung. But yeah. This is, this is really cool. I hope that that was helpful with the breaking down of his sound. He dominantly stays there even when he's belting. Although as he's belting, you'll notice his mouth starts to open a little bit more just so we get a little bit more propagation through the mouth. So that means that the vocal folds have created the pitch for him. Some of it is propagated up through the mouth and some of it may have gone up through the nose. It is possible to have a lazy soft palate. And by lazy, I just mean it doesn't kind of relax into like a fully relaxed position, but it's not fully raised either. The soft palate is pretty flexible as far as like what position it can rest in and it can also carry tension. So sometimes you can be tense holding that soft palate down and then you wind up with problematic nasality because there's tension in the back of your throat. You may not be able to release that nasality or release that tension. Or you could have a really tense soft palate that doesn't like to relax down and then you wind up with more of your nasalized consonants that struggle to sound right. If that makes any sense at all either. But yeah, that's 
all to do with the soft palate, that sound that he is getting there, that nasalized sound is from the soft palate being in a relaxed position to allow the sound to propagate up through the nose. But yeah, I do feel like the music really shone for me with this. I couldn't stop the smile going across my face if I tried uh, the musicianship and execution of some of the unexpected yet technically and artistically satisfying elements. Just really, really well demonstrated with this. This was, this was great. Those kinds of things can screw up actually, if you don't have the musicianship to handle it. Like it's just something as simple as that rapid rhythmic pattern that they used as a transition at the end there. You have one person who's slightly out and it loses that, that crispness. So you lose the surprise, you lose the intensity of that sudden change. I feel like musically, this was, this was a great number for me to listen to just so I can also hear more of the band. Couldn't really see a whole heap of the rest of the band. I mean, we got little snapshots of them here and there, but yeah, Jethro Tull, what a, what a beast of a group. This was great. This was fun. And the musical influence is definitely something that I can get behind with like those blues stylings that snuck in there every now and again. This is great. But anyways, that's where I'm going to leave that one today. Thank you so much for joining me. If you did enjoy this video, please be sure to give it a like, click the subscribe button and the bell notification beside it for more just like this one. As usual, I hope you're staying safe. I hope you are staying healthy and I will see you next time. Bye. Morning, good afternoon, good evening, whichever. Mm. All right, guys, we might call it there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> hey. Mm -hmm.